Greetings, YouTube. Uh, some people have expressed interest in a few of the videos that I posted uh, that were filmed at the Institute of Biosensory Psychology. Uh, so I thought I'd do this short uh, series of video presentations uh, telling a little bit about the Institute. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how long this uh, series will be. To some extent, it's an experiment. So uh, we'll just uh, have to see where it goes and how it goes. Uh, in this first video, uh, I'd like to say a few things about the Institute itself. And we'll talk about some of the premises of biosensory psychology and then a little bit about telekinesis as such. Uh, first of all, about the Institute. Uh, the Institute of Biosensory Psychology is located in St. Petersburg, Russia. It has been operating since approximately 1989 uh, under various, uh, various uh, legal forms. Uh, it is currently registered in the Russian Federation as a private education institution of additional professional education. It is the only institution that is uh, currently licensed in the area of uh, uh, what's called of uh, these types of studies uh, that have something to do with uh, biosensory works, uh, natural human abilities, and things of that nature. The institute was founded and is currently headed by a man uh, named Vladimir Tonkov, which uh, in English, I guess, would sound something like Vladimir Tonkov or something like that. Uh, in at least one of the videos on my channel, he is mistakenly referred to as Victor Tonkov. Uh, so you should know that that's an error uh, in the video. I've uh, tried to fix it in the screenshot you're seeing on the screen right now. Uh, his name is Vladimir. We study at the Institute if speaking broadly, involve the studies of um, natural human abilities. Uh, this, of course, takes us to a rather broad array of areas, uh, starting from philosophy and the various types of esoterical studies to things like uh, healing, uh, healing yourself, healing other people, and phenomena such as uh, telekinesis, uh, electrokinesis, and various other types of external phenomena. Uh, there are also areas um, uh, that the Institute provides an education in, uh, such as business management, uh, family management, or I shouldn't say family management, uh, but rather family studies, uh, personal consultations, and uh, various other things of that sort, uh, a very broad, broad range uh, of studies. If you do a uh, search on the Institute of Biosensory Psychology on the web, uh, if you type it into, a, into your uh, browser search engine, you will see a few websites, a modest amount. Uh, the official website of the Institute is the one that's spelled biosense.ru, and biosense is without an E on the end. Um, it's mostly in Russian. Uh, you can probably use Google Translate to get a reasonable translation of the material. Uh, but it also has an English section. Uh, it's, it's rather small, of course, limited. Uh, it has been uh, translated in full. Uh, to get the English section, just click the, the English button at the top left of the screen. Uh, another resource of, of the Institute is called metaportal.ru. Uh, that resource is currently uh, in Russian only, although a search engine may point you to an English version of the site, and you should know that this is, uh, hasn't been officially uh, opened yet. Uh, this is a beta version of the site. But it is in the works uh, to get something like this set up uh, so that we could interact with the uh, international community. Uh, if we were to speak about biosensory psychology as such, uh, what makes it different uh, from other types of psychology? Uh, the main thing that makes biosensory psychology different is the fact that it treats the human psyche as a material formation. Uh, this is a big difference from the classical psychology, which, which treats the human psyche as something uh, that is immaterial or ideal, uh, as you might say. In biosensory psychology, uh, the psyche is seen as, uh, say, uh, an extension of the human physical body. 
Uh, it is recognized that the uh, human physical body, what we are, what we are accustomed to touching, sensing, using our, using our tactile sensations, the physical body, is only a part of the human being. There are other parts that are beyond the visible range and beyond the, uh, the traditional tactile range uh, of our perception. But nevertheless, these things are material, and the study involves, uh, the study of biosensory psychology involves the study of this portion of the human being. Uh, so when you approach things like telekinesis from that angle, it becomes uh, rather obvious uh, of how the phenomenon of telekinesis occurs. We are obviously um, influencing a physical object using those, uh, those, those other parts of ours. And uh, of course, the big difficulty that many people have is, well, how do I do this? Well, uh, as one might expect, these other parts, uh, they exist under, I guess you could call it under a different set of rules. And the study, uh, the way to, to come to, uh, I guess, to, to grips, to touch with those other parts of yourself, is a certain tuning process, a process of tuning into yourself, uh, the other parts, different kind of fragments or portions of you. And uh, it can be a very time-consuming process, uh, very painstaking. But under proper guidance, as experience has shown, uh, such effects as telekinesis can be produced uh, by a person in as little as a few seconds or a few minutes. And there have been many examples of this at the Institute. So um, with this, I'll end the, this short presentation. And uh, feel free to post any comments, uh, questions, or whatever.